Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak, Wadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, salutations, much love and respect to you, Akim, out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Well, this lesson is going to be dealing with <coughs> the times when men of the Lord lied, okay, and I'm not going into every single account, okay, I'm going into a few counts that came to mind, um, you know, as I was reading at certain, you know, as I was reading um, this particular account, another account came to mind as well, <clears throat> which further proves that the scriptures is not black and white. OK, in other words, there are certain times where you have to move in the spirit and you're justified by Yahweh Shai. You're justified by Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. OK, um, Meaning you're not condemned, you know, because if a Christian will tell you, oh, you can't lie, brother, lying is a sin. And, you know, they'll be in particular situations, you know, um, and you have certain bug outs that'll, you know, because they're so, so filled with the spirit of Jesus that they'll be like, no, I can't lie. And if I lie, uh, you know, that's a sin. And, you know, and then they'll feel condemned in their heart. But there's times when. The most high, um, the most high commanded certain men of the Lord to lie. Okay. Not saying that lying is right. This is not what I'm, what I'm saying here. This is not what I'm saying here. But there is a thing of righteous, um, righteous, um, moving in the spirit. Okay. It's a thing of moving in the spirit. I'll say that moving in the spirit. Okay. So let's go to let's go to this particular account. Let's go to First Samuel's the sixteenth chapter. <clears throat> and this is when King David was about to be anointed king. Okay. I'll start at one. I'll start at one. It said and Yahweh said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And, and Yahweh said, Take an heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to Yahweh. You see what I'm saying to you? So the Lord told him to, to, to say what? To say that he's coming to sacrifice to Yahweh. Okay. But what was he coming to do? He was coming to anoint uh, King David as king over Israel. See? So this was an exception that the Lord had Samuel use guile to get into a particular position they did not david not, did not king david use guile when he was caught up by those those um was it ammon by those ammonites i believe it was ammon if i'm not mistaken man or maybe i'm mistaken on that but he was caught up by ammonites and he played uh like he was um like he was, had, was retarded he played like he was slow like he had down syndrome okay started drooling on his on his beard okay Matter of fact, I can get that account as well. Give me a second. Okay, let's go here. Let's go to First Kings, not First, not King, First Kings, First Samuel's twenty-one. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna read this in the, uh, in the NIV. I'm gonna read this in the NIV, man. Okay, so you could get a full understanding. Of what was going on 
Okay, this is 1 Samuel 21 and 13. It says, matter of fact, I'll start at verse 12. It said, matter of fact, I'll start at 10. It says, that day David fled from Saul and went to Achish, king of Gath. But the servants of Achish said to him, isn't this David, the king of the land? Isn't he the one they sing about in their dances? Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. David took these words to heart and was very much afraid of Achish, king of Gath. So he pretended, which is what? Which is deceit. Okay, the scriptures speak about uh, deceit. Okay, how that's a negative thing, right? So he pretended to be insane in their presence. And while he, while he was in their hands, he acted like a madman, like someone who was crazy, making marks on the doors of the gate and letting saliva run down his beard. Akish said to his servants, look at the man. He is insane. Why bring him to me? Am I so short of madmen that you have to bring this fellow here to carry on like this in front of me? Must this man come into my house? Right. So he so so David used guile and deception to get out of that situation, which was in the spirit. OK, he did that in the spirit. OK. You understand? And he was not condemned. He's still the anointed of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Guess what? King Peter, when he denied the Lord, he really denied the Lord in the spirit because did not the Lord prophesy that he would do that? So that had to come to pass. Or that would have made Yahweh Shai's uh, a, a false prophet. That would make, make Yahweh Shai's prophecy not to come to pass. You see? So it had to come to pass, man. All right. At some point, one point or another, it would have to have come to pass. That doesn't mean the prophets get everything exactly on. But Yahweh Shai is Yahweh Shai. Right. So that was in the spirit that had to happen. OK. Oh, well, matter of fact, the, pro the, the actual prophecy said that he was he was um that he, he was forsaken of all. So guess what? That had to happen. That was in the spirit when Peter denied the Lord. Although that was that was off, that was wicked, according to what? According to the scriptures, but it had to happen. Okay, and guess what? Peter was not condemned. You see, if you listen to a Christian, oh, uh, you lied, that's a sin, and you guys are acting like you're righteous, but you're lying, and you lied here, and you lied there. The thing is, um, as men, we don't, uh, as, as men of the Lord, we're not, we're not accustomed to lying. We're not... Uh, our our, our um, habit is not to lie. Let's say if the police stop you and you've been drinking and they ask you, I'm going to give you an example right now. If the police stop you and you've been drinking, okay, and you, they ask you, have you been drinking? And you say, yes, I have been drinking. <laughs> Good luck to you because the police, their job is not to show mercy. They're not in the show and mercy business. They're in the oppression business. They're in their agents of oppression. Okay. You understand what I'm saying to you? I'm not telling you to do nothing. You don't have to say you, you could say, yeah, yes, I've been drinking and maybe it'll work out for you. But I'll tell you right now, nine times out of ten, it, it's not going to work out for you. I've tried that before. I've tried to be truthful to a police officer and this and that. And that. I tried that. That does not work. That does not work if, if if the situation, depending on the situation that you're in, depending on the situation, a situation like that, <laughs> you're looking to lose your license, you're looking to, to lose your whip. Okay. So you got you have to understand, you have to be in the spirit, you have to move in the spirit. And I'm going I'm to I'm show you that right. In, well, this scenario shows you that. 1 Samuel 16. I'm going to read that again. And Samuel said, how can I go if Saul hear it? He will kill me. And Yahweh said, take an heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And that's not what he was coming for. Okay. He was coming for to what? 
to to um to anoint king david as king and call jesse to to the sacrifice and i will shew thee what thou shalt do and thou shalt anoint unto me him whom i i i name unto thee and samuel did that which the lord spake and came to bethlehem and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said comest thou peaceably and he said peaceably I am come to sacrifice unto Yahweh. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. So that was only for them. Okay, that was only for Jesse and his sons because it was for another reason. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely Yahweh's anointed is before me, before him. Okay, and then he went all the way down the line, all the way to King David. And boom, and, and it says what David anointed, point blank period. Okay, point blank period. So that's what he came for. He didn't come to to uh, to um, send up that sacrifice. He came, his purpose was to what? To anoint King David. But in that particular instance, because Saul would have killed him, right? He had to do this particular thing. And these things are all, the scriptures say the things that are written aforetime are written for our learning. He's going to say, yeah, David, I'm, the, the, the spirit of the Lord is on me and I'm going to go and, uh, yeah, Saul, the spirit of the Lord is on me. And what am I doing? I'm going to anoint another king. The Lord could have put it in David, in Saul's heart to say, nah, I'm not going to, nah, I'm not going to do nothing. I'm going to let him do it because the Lord said it. But the Lord didn't put it in Saul's heart to do that. The Lord put it in, in, in Samuel's mind to, to what? To, um. To, to use guile, to use deceit, to lie in this particular instance. Okay? You see what I'm saying to you? So you have to understand that. And we're just showing you the, so that you can expand your mind dealing with the scriptures. And if, and if you're of the elect, and if the Lord is dealing with you, you'll understand and you will, um, and you will, um, and you will be, you know, you will, you'll be able to understand that this thing is not so black and white as you've been taught by the Christian church, all right? Which they don't keep the commandments anyway. They're a bunch. They're a bunch of liars anyway. Okay, they're they're true liars. Okay, but the thing is this: <clears throat> we're showing you instances where the Most High has, uh, where men of the Lord have lied. That's all we're showing you, right? That's all we're showing you. Because they'll make it seem like the middle Lord were just sitting in the lotus position and floating and then they never told a lie. They never, they never did any, you know, they never did anything wrong. That's not true. We're showing you that the men of the Lord, ultimately what I'm showing you is that the men of the Lord were, were, were men. They were actual men on the earth and they had men, man emotions. They did things that were wrong. They did, they did certain things that were off. They did certain things that they shouldn't have done. But the thing is that they, they, they were sorrowful when they went off and they repented when they went off. Okay. And ultimately, the bottom line is that they're of the elect. That's it. This is 2 Kings 6, 6 and 20. It says, um, and it came to pass when they come into, in, uh, into Samaria that Elisha said, Yahweh opened the eye. Uh, uh, no, no. Let's go up. This is when this is when the king of Syria was coming to put uh, Elijah to death, or Elisha to death, rather. Okay? And this is what Elisha did. Uh, okay. Right. So this is when he's coming to capture Elisha, right? It says, Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the of, of the man of the most high was risen early and gone forth, behold a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And the servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they be they, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And and the Lord opened 
the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elisha you know and Elisha could see it okay but the, the young man couldn't see it before until he until he had it until the Lord opened his eyes and when they came down to him Elisha uh, prayed unto Yahweh and said smite this people I pray thee with blindness and this is spiritual blindness this is not this is like how Jake is spiritually blind this is the blindness that he smote them with and he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha and Elisha said unto them this is not the way neither is this this the city right what city the city that they were looking for right which which was that true no that was a lie because he was the man that they were looking for it says follow me and i and i will bring you to the man whom ye seek right which is a lie because he was the man whom, whom they seek right but he led them to samaria and it came to pass when they were come to samaria that elisha said yahweh opened their eyes uh opened the eyes of these men and they may see and yahweh opened their eyes and they saw and behold they were in the midst of samaria and the king of israel said unto elisha when he saw them my father shall i smite them shall i smite them and he answered thou he answered thou shalt not smite them wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive uh with thy with thy um with thy sword and with thy bow set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master so that's it so anyway so he he deceived them he lied to them and he misled them to what so that he can be delivered and that's how the lord delivered him all right well, matter of fact um when when um paul was speaking to and in see in in, in in vocab and them they can't get it when paul was speaking to was that agrippa he was using guile he wasn't he wasn't speaking uh the truth about him being delivered because he's not going to be delivered he's an edomite man okay okay if he's an edomite he's not going to be delivered so if paul was speaking to him like that knowing he's an edomite then guess what he was using guile he was trying to butter him up for that, for what? For that particular, because of this condition that he was in, right? Since he was trying to get out of that, that condition of being in bond. So he tried to, to, to find favor. That's what you, it's like you, us going in front of the judge and telling him, by the way, you're, you know, we're going to say your honor. Do we believe that these judges are honorable? Absolutely not. But we go into a courthouse, we're going to say your honor. <laughs> All right. I can say, nigga, you, by the way, you an Edomite. You ain't no real judge. That's a, an idiot who would say, only a dummy would say something like that. Only a guy who's looking to get to, who likes jail, who likes to, 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 to be bunched up with a bunch of men in a cage would say something like that. You guys have to use common sense. It, it, is that, am I saying that lying is right? No, I'm trying to expand your mind to show you. That, you know, that these things happen because the men of the Lord are men. And certain times they have to deliver themselves by these type of means. And I'm showing you, man. There was even an account where the Lord told a man, a man of the Lord to deceive. God, well, not, not just one account, but I'm just saying this, this particular account. Okay? That's the one that I could think of. It's 1 Samuel the 16th. 16th chapter. Right, so you see, so you see, the Christian ain't gonna show you the, the full perspective of the scriptures because they don't know the full perspective. They have this plantation Christian uh, Disney World perspective of the scriptures, which is not a uh, reality, man. This is Leviticus 19 and 11. It says, Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, okay, neither lie one to another. Yes, it's, it's wrong to lie, it's not wrong to deal falsely, and we are not to lie. Or to deal falsely as men has this happened before absolutely it has happened before this is why we need Yahweh Shai that's another reason why we need Yahweh Shai okay but guess what the Lord knows our hearts the Lord knows our hearts okay this is Proverbs 17 and 7 it says excellent speech become and like I said we do not make lying a custom of course not of course not Okay, and that's just to prove that you're not. Um, another thing is that we're not. Um, 
uh, we're not justified by the law. Okay, we're justified by Yahweh Shai. Okay, because if that was the case, then if it was just a thing black and white, then Peter would be condemned for denying the Lord. This is Proverbs 17 and 7. It says, and, and King David would be condemned for committing adultery and so on and so forth. This is Proverbs 17 and 7. Excellent speech becometh not a fool, much less do lying lips a prince. And guess what? The rulers of this world, they're accustomed to lie. All they do is lie. That's that's they, they're su supremely accustomed to lying. Everyone knows a politician's a liar. And those are the princes of this world. They're actors. They're hypocrites. They're great hypocrites. Okay, Esau himself. All these Edomites are great hypocrites and actors. These guess what? These women are hypocrites and actors. Okay, these men of the world are hypocrites and actors. These Christians are hypocrites and actors and liars. A lot of these Israelite groups are hypocrites, actors, and liars. We as men of the Lord are not supposed to be that. We're supposed to give it to you, uh, give you the hundred percent truth. Okay, the bitter and the sweet. This is Romans eight and in in one. It says there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Hamashiach Yahweh who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of uh, of life is Hamashiach Yahweh of life in Hamashiach Yahweh Excuse me hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, right? Because we sin because we're in the flesh. We're men, all right? The Most High said that does not make the law wicked. Read Romans 3 and 31. The law, the law is righteous. It's us that is off. And we have to try to do our best to keep the law, man. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Okay, let me read that again. The Most High sending his own son in likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Yeah, because Yahweh Shai didn't sin even though he was in the flesh, showing you how great of a spirit Yahweh Shai was. That the, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Right, Yahweh Shai did it, right? He, could, he basically condemned sin so that we are not uh, condemned. Okay, so that we are not condemned. He what he did that walk without sinning, so that we don't have to do that walk without sinning because we're in the flesh and we're not on his level in any way, shape, or form. You see, this is why he's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, man. Matter of fact, this is a, a great example in Matthew's twelfth chapter of the Lord justifying his men, even though they're sinning right here. This is a sin, and it, 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 and does that make it? ideal no it's not a good thing right to sin but it happens and and it, and the lord knows our heart that's the bottom line the lord knew their hearts this is matthews 12 and 1 it says at that time yahweh went on the sabbath day through the corn and his disciples were unhungered and began to pluck the ears of the corn and to eat see yahweh wasn't plucking the ears yahweh was was not sinning he said hey, i'm not sinning because yahweh was that man Okay, but us were weak. Okay, I said, but when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Right, because it's not, then that's true. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was unhungered, and they, they that were with him, how he entered into the house of the Most High? And did eat the shoe bread. See, so he's doing what I'm doing. He's going into accounts of this thing happening. Although it is sin, although it's going off according to the law, which is correct. But these things happen. <laughs> okay. Which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were, were with him, but only for the priest. Or have ye not read in the law how the Sabbath, how that the Sabbath, uh, that on the Sabbath days the priest in the temple profane the sabbath and are blameless Ooh. but i say unto you that in the right because the police still have to work on the sabbath day but i say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple but if ye had known what this meaneth i will have i would have mercy and not sacrifice you would have not condemned the guiltless Ooh. so he looked at them as guiltless even though they were committing that sin you see, and he was giving examples in the scriptures. Okay, 
But that's not, Yahweh Shai said he came not to destroy the law. He's not come to destroy the law. And even Paul spoke about it. Let's get Romans 3 and 31. And I'm, I'm getting ready to close up. Got to go to the gym. But you, you, this is this is the point, man. And you Christians don't get it because the spirit of the Lord is not dealing with you. So you can't understand what we're saying, man. This is Proverbs, uh, Romans 33 and 29. It says, is he the most high of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Meaning the Israelite foreigners. That's the Gentiles. Okay, not actual heathens. Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God, one power, which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Okay, because you have to have faith in Yahweh Shai. That's the most important thing. Do we then make void the law through faith? Because we have faith in Yahweh Shai, do we make void the law? Do we make the law mean nothing? No, I'll eat pork if I want because uh, I'm under grace. The Lord is not dealing with a nigga like that, man. Okay, that's easy to not eat abominable food. That's easy. That's you just well. That means your God is your belly. Okay, and your belly is is wicked if you're desiring to eat these 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 abominations, man. And you and all you're doing is worshiping your belly. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. God forbid. So what the hell you Christians got to say, man? Yay, we establish the law. So when we bring up the law, we establish the law, but we still are sinning because we are in this flesh. But we're not, we do not wear sin as a garment as you Christians do. You Christians don't even think about the laws of the Most High. King David said, I meditate upon thy laws. He said, I meditate daily on thy laws, man. You don't, you Christians don't meditate on the law of the Most High. The Most High is not in all their thoughts, meaning they don't think about what, what the laws of the Most High say, man. They think about what they, what they feel in their heart. I feel the Most High was speaking to me and this and all this jibber jabber, man. None of it scriptural. Okay? So, anyways, with that, Lord willing, this was edifying to the elect. And I'll say shallow one.